And before we begin today's video, we do have to install the RuneLite plugin called Gnome Restaurant. This will help me out significantly throughout this whole grind. And with that being said, let's deliver food for 10 hours. Start that 10 hour timer today. We're going to be doing Gnome Restaurant the whole day, and we're going to be receiving hard jobs from Gian Jr. here. And once we receive these jobs, we're just simply going to complete them, whether it's cooking something or creating a drink. My first job was to create and cook a tomato batta from scratch essentially so I use this store that's just to the north here to buy all of my ingredients this works for any job that requires cooking something I also use the stove here and occasionally I do have to leave to get secondary ingredients but sometimes I can just complete the whole job by staying in this one specific spot and this job is taking a little longer than usual because this was my very first one of the video and I had never done this before I did watch a quick guide so I got the gist of things especially installing that plug-in that plugin is so useful because as you can tell on the top left of the screen, it just gives you step-by-step -step directions on what to do and where to go. So without that plugin, I'm not sure if I could do this as easily. But first, as I continue delivering food today, I feel like now's a good time to deliver you guys something too. And that is today's sponsor. It left me shocked. Why? Because just like you, I've heard them basically advertise everywhere and a lot of people assumed the game sucked. But boy, was I wrong because actually, I am hooked. Yeah, it was like discovering fire for the first time, and, and I'm not the only one who feels this way. So many people thought that Raid Shadow Legends had no actual gameplay or any type of strategy, but you would be surprised by the amount of content it has. With over 800 heroes, PvE, PvP, and CVC, so many artifacts, clan bosses, there's always something to do. Raid made a huge leap in content in 2023 with with the Cursed City just being one example. So much in-game content now to check out and complete with over a hundred stages just in the Doom Tower alone, including stages where you're gonna need to take down two of Raid's bosses at the same time. So many people, including myself, spend a lot of time on Raid, and why not? We freaking enjoy it! Whether you wanna play on your cell phone or your computer, there's nothing like starting your day with a little bit of Shadow Legends. And with Raid thriving, there has never been a better time to start playing 5 million active users a month. You can't go wrong. And speaking of five, happy five years to Raid Shadow Legends. And with that fifth year, they are celebrating by doing a crazy amount of giveaways for new players. All the bonuses are available by downloading Raid only via my link in the description or by scanning the QR code on screen. You're going to get bonuses worth $100, including Lady Atessa, 500,000 silver, and much more. Also, after reaching level 25, you're going to get an additional 500,000 silver, epic skill tomes, potions, and you guessed it, much, much more. Now after downloading my link or scanning the QR code, make sure to use the festive promo code FESTIVAL5 to get another epic champion, Tyrell. And guess what? An additional, you guessed it, 500,000 silver. I certainly wish I could have gotten this when I started playing. Come find me today under the name Mr. No Sleep, and we'll be legends together. Huge thank you, and a happy birthday to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. I swear these ads just keep getting better and better. But uh, needless to say, we uh, we got to get back to this video. We got to deliver this food. Our customer is waiting. So let's go ahead and deliver it. And what are we going to receive as a tip? I'm hoping it's something big, but uh, well, you know, three toad flax. At least they're noted. I will take that. And essentially what this is going to be for the first two hours of the video today is it's going to be any job that I get, I do right away. After about about two hours you accumulate enough points to where you can choose which jobs you want to do and that's going to come in handy because really we just want to be focusing on five different NPCs throughout this whole video so the first two hours we're going to deliver to every NPC we're going to be traveling all around RuneScape but after that we're just going to be using the same five and I'll get into that in a little bit so for this delivery I need two king worms and if you need to obtain them and you don't have them in the bank you can simply use this swamp right outside and pick them up and the same goes for the toad legs for my gear, I used 
useful, graceful, as well as a ring of endurance. And for the inventory, I just had very useful teleports for those five NPCs that we're going to be targeting later. And of course, the max cape, which helps me get pretty much everywhere. Another delivery completed. And what are we going to receive this time? 10 noted uncut sapphires. Following this in the Varrock Castle, I did complete a job. This was my only job that I uh, did complete in the castle. And I got an uncut diamond. So it looks like you're going to be getting some gems while doing this. All right, so I showed you guys uh, how I do a food order. Let me go ahead and show you how I do a drink order. So I go all the way to the east to Heckle Funch here, and I purchase every ingredient that I need. It's very important to have a cocktail glass as well. Don't forget to purchase that like I did here, but luckily you can purchase that from him as well. And you always are going to have that cocktail shaker in your inventory because it's used so much during this grind. And there's also a stove nearby here as well, which is used occasionally. It's actually used in this step uh, for this specific drink. So we're going to go ahead and go use that. Um, it's one of the last steps to make the drink. You just have to heat it up. And once it's heated up, you use the secondary ingredients to finish it off. Again, everything you need for this is in this area, so you can just purchase them here. And now we're going to complete the delivery, and what are we going to receive? The beautiful gnome scarf. This gnome scarf can only be obtained by delivering to two different NPCs, and that was one of them. That was Captain Darkin. The other captain that gives it is Captain Nintu, and the current price is 357 k but it was actually a collection log for me as well. It was my first ever time getting one myself. All right, so here we have the reward token. If you activate this token, a gnome rider will spawn next to you and deliver you some food. Um, I don't think anyone in this game actually uses this thing for food while they're like in a remote location doing Slayer or something. To be fair, maybe people do. I've just never seen a gnome rider spawn uh, to deliver food before. So th essentially they're useless. I mean, that's my opinion of them. But all I can say based on guides that I watched is that after two hours of grinding this mini game, you have enough reward tokens to where you can start choosing the NPCs and the jobs that you want to do. Other than that, that's all I got for the reward tokens. All right, another delivery to the captain yet again, and we got a gnome ball, which is about 15k, so I will take it. That specific captain gives you gnome goggles and the gnome scarf, so that's the highlight with him. And there's only one other captain that you need to be delivering to when you get to the point that you can choose your own jobs, and that would be Captain Nintu. And again, we do receive the gnome scarf from him, just like you see there on screen, our second one of the video so far. But those are the only two captains that are worth delivering to. Other than this, you're going to be delivering to three other NPCs, again, once you can start choosing, and that would be Bram Bickle, and he is found northwest of Trollheim. Then we have Penwi, found in southwest Karamja, and then Wingstone, who is found in Narda. So those five NPCs are the breadwinners for this. You want to be using them because the captains give you the scarf drop, and the other three gnome NPCs give you the mint cake, as well as the grand seed pod drop. And the grand seed pod drop is valued at 900k. So that is the most expensive item that you can get from this mini game. And the mint cake is 76k. So that's not bad too. But for now, we are one hour in. Let's price check. These are all the normal drops coming out to be 95k. And then with the scarves included, it is 813k. We only have one more hour left until we can start choosing who we want to deliver to. So that's going to be awesome. But for now, we'll just continue to deliver to the random NPCs who give us the uh, weird drops like adamant bolts or a little bit of herbs, mithril bolts, some tooth and loop keys, all sorts of weird stuff you get from these uh, deliveries. This is on a collection log as well. There are four different items that you need to get. One of them is the pod. The other one is the mint cake. The other one would be the scarf, which we already got. And finally, the goggles. Goggles aren't too much of a highlight. You can only receive them from the same two captains that you can receive the scarf from. And I think they're less than 30k. But with another hour being completed, we didn't get a scarf that whole hour, but we are so close to now being able to have enough points to choose our deliveries and that time should be right now. So now that we've done two hours, we are an experienced delivery person. I would say delivery driver, but we're teleporting over here. So now we can choose five NPCs that I wrote down on a notepad and I already told you guys about the NPCs. So now I'll walk you through the dialogue on how to consistently get them and only them. So we're ready to take a job and we're going to see who we get. We just have to go to the edge of the world dialogue. We click that every time and then we continue and we see that we got an NPC that is not one of the five. So we're going to just go ahead and restart the conversation. We're not going to click continue or anything like that. You can if you want, but you just basically re-click it. Get assigned a hard job again. Go through the dialogue and uh, make sure you click the same things every time. The edge of the world, you click that and then she will give you another one. And luckily, I only had to cancel one delivery and then I got assigned one of the captains that I needed. And the reason you want to prioritize these five is because these five NPCs are the only ones that can give you the collection log rewards and the collection log rewards make up for the most profit. So naturally, it makes sense
sense to only target uh, these five people. It kind of makes me feel bad for all the other people that don't get deliveries, though. And there's the Iron Man working on another video. I was also watching some stuff on the side. But yeah, either way, uh, this is how I get to this specific captain. I teleport to Catherby, then I simply run northeast, and I go down the stairs into the bar, and that's how you reach that captain. Next NPC I will guide you guys to is Bram Bickle. So he's one of the five as well. We're going to use the hilt to teleport directly to Trollheim. You can definitely use a Trollheim teleport if you don't have access to the hilt. Then you simply run northwest. You might need a stamina for this if you happen to run out of energy. But you go through the ice troll cave and there's Bram Bickle at the end of it. I'm sure most of you guys recognize him from Clue Scrolls. Looks like he's a little cold out there, but he gave me a Snapdragon. All right, now I'm going to show you guys how to get to Penwi. Uh, for this one, we have to deliver a fruit batter. So we're going to use the uh, jewelry box to go to the duel arena, also known as the PvP arena. And then we're going to take the glider to Gandius, which is Karamsha. And then he's usually right outside the gate. He can also be found south of this location or a little southwest of this location, but that's how to get to him. And now we have Captain Durkin, which is a very easy one. I kind of showed you guys this in the beginning, but basically jewelry box to the duel arena once again, and then you run upstairs and he is right here. Quick and accessible, so that's good. And he always gives scarves. Look at that, another scarf coming in. That is 1 and 16, so not bad odds of getting it. 56 deliveries so far, three scarves, but we're still missing the pod, the goggles, and the mint cake. Never been a big fan of mint in real life, but I love cake. All right, last NPC is Wingstone. We use the desert amulet to teleport to Narda, and then we simply run west until we find him. But at this time, I would like to say that this plugin that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video can mislead you if you spam click through it, and for that instance, it misled me. Managed to obtain the gnome goggles, though, so I will happily take that from Captain Nintu. And looking at the bank tab, it is growing. We have a lot of gems, a little bit of keys, some gnome balls, a little bit of bird nests, and a nice amount of scarves so far with three hours in, seven hours left to go. And not too long after our first pair of goggles, we did manage to get our second pair. Unfortunately, not worth that much at all, but it is another collection log slot overall, so it's nice to have that completed. Delivering the Blurberry special and getting a nice gnome scarf from it. I really wish these things were 1 million GP each, because if they were, this would be a lot more profitable. But it always is a nice feeling to get it as a reward. I mean, it's only about 350k. According to the wiki, this is 1 mil an hour. And even though we just got back-to-back -back gnome scarves, I can assure you, this is not 1 mil GP an hour. That might just be because the price of the scarf went down so much, but we're still unable to get the pod and the mint cake or I spoke too soon. There is the mint cake. I will take that. We have one collection log left for this uh, mini game. The mint cake, like I mentioned before, 75k. It says GE average 93k, so I guess it uh, kind of hovers around that price. I got a weird untradeable drop called Snake Charm. Might be a quest item. Not too sure, but I'll keep it in the bank for now. Another banking session and we are now four hours into the video, six hours remaining. I can definitely see this as a one mil GP an hour money making method if the scarf was about a mil, because it seems like I'm I'm averaging one every hour or so, maybe every 90 minutes, give or take. But we're halfway in now, and we still have not received the pod drop, which is the most expensive drop that you can get from doing this mini game. And it is only one in 22, so it's not that rare to get compared to the scarf. Well, I managed to find Wingstone again. Sometimes you really have to run around this area, but managed to get the Grand Seed Pods. Five of them. This does essentially the same exact thing as a Royal Seed Pod, except you can teleport upstairs as well, not just downstairs. But yeah, 881k from that one reward. And since it took five hours to receive the first one, I really hope we have better luck for the remaining five hours so that our profit per hour goes way up. Because although I love getting these goggles, these scarves, as well as the mint cakes, they are not worth that much at all. And I really don't know why. If you guys have any idea, leave it in the comments comment section below. I was just guessing that maybe bots did this for a while and they crashed the price and then they stopped doing it. I wouldn't really know though. I only stayed in one world for this video and I didn't see anyone else doing this. I mean, I don't think many people would other than maybe Max Mains or Max Ironman who want to go for the collection log completion. I think the collection log completion only took me about five hours since the last item I needed was the pod. So it's not too bad and it honestly shouldn't take you that long. I think I just got unlucky. I also noticed that there was another NPC called Professor Manglethorpe who does give you the 
the Royal Seed pod drop. But for some reason, on all the guides I saw, he was not an NPC to use. Maybe it's because his location is so far away. I'm not too sure, but maybe I should have done him as well, and I might have made more profit. But speaking of profit, here is another Grand Seed Pod drop. Really nice to see that towards the end here, and to my surprise, when I went and did my very next job, I did get a back-to-back -back pod drop. So that will help out the price check immensely. Uh, it's really nice to get a back-to-back, -back. and I did get back-to-back -back scarves earlier on in the day as well. So with that being said, we have one hour left to go, and this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the most annoying part about this grind. As you can see, to do this dialogue, you have to go again and again over this conversation until you get assigned the NPC that you need, and sometimes you have to decline 20 jobs to get assigned just one that you can get a collection log item from, so that definitely is a very annoying process. Um, it almost made me want to just do every delivery instead of just the important ones, but other than that, it was a pretty enjoyable grind. Kind of got repetitive, but I was enjoying it anyway because I had never done this before, and you guys have been requesting this video for so many years, and I probably should have done it all those years ago because the price of Gnome Scarf is not what it used to be. I think it was, again, I think it was one mil at least, and it could have even have been two mil, so who knows, but the point is, 184 deliveries were completed in 10 hours time. So now it is time for the price check. We managed to get five mint cakes, four goggles, seven scarves, and 15 pods. Not too bad at all. 184 deliveries. Let's go ahead and do the price check. We actually gained 40k cooking XP from this too. Not impressive at all, but as goes for the price check, everything does add up to be 6.2 million GP. Now you may be thinking, Mr. No Sleep, you forgot to price check the mint cakes. What is wrong with you? That is true, but we're going to go sell everything anyway, and I'll definitely make sure to sell the mint cakes so we get the actual price, because you guys know a lot of these items, you know, are very strange. They, they might not sell for what they're shown for, so let's just go ahead and see the real value of all these things. Looks like the mint cakes sold for exactly what they were shown as, but the gnome goggles, they were not selling for 64k each, so I put them in for 36k and they sold. The scarves, unfortunately, had to go down to 270k from the initial 350k, and the grand seed pods, although they were showing at 200k each, I had to sell them for about 140k each. So even though I did sell the mint cakes and I forgot them in the first price check, I still only received 6.1 mil. Averaged about 600k an hour, plus uh, 4k cooking XP an hour, and I would say it's all about RNG to maximize your profit here. Well, I'm glad that I finally tried this out. I was not uh, too impressed with the overall results, but that's all right. And a reminder that if you want to help support the channel, download Raid Shadow Legends using the link in the description or the QR code. And a huge thank you to all the YouTube channel members with a special shout out to XXXotic and Deception Z for your extra monthly support. I do appreciate it. Well, that's going to be it for now, guys. I will see you in two days from now with a new upload. It's either going to be on the main account or the Iron Man, so stay tuned. And until then, Mr. No Sleep out.